Hey guys, welcome to YellowDingy.com. It's Mario, and I'm doing a game glance on Transformers War for Cybertron, and I'm playing it on the Xbox 360. So basically, it's Transformers, and it's made up of robots. Robots in disguise, and I'm sure everyone's familiar with them. So you can either play as the Decepticons, and they're the bad guys, and what they're trying to do is take over Cybertron. And Cybertron is the planet of the Autobots. You can also play as the Autobots, in which, you're, in which case you're trying to defend the planet against the bad guys, the Decepticons. Megatron heads up the Decepticons, and he has taken control over the stuff called Darkatron, uh, which makes him more powerful. And what he's trying to do is input this Darkatron into the planet to take it over. Now on the other side of things, you are, can play the Autobots, and they're headed up by Optimus. Now, this is kind of interesting because this is actually takes place before Optimus is actually a Prime. Um, but however, Optimus is in the situation where his planet's being taken over, and he thinks that Zeta Prime, and Zeta Prime is essentially the big dog of the Autobots, might be dead. So he's trying to figure out what's going on with Zeta Prime, and trying to figure out what's going on with his planet. So for the storyline, uh, it seems like it's before the movies take place. So it doesn't seem like it's a movie game at all. It's sort of a unique game that doesn't apply to the movies. It's more based on the original sort of Transformers story. The controls are very well done. Uh, they seem very logical and seamless. Their characters are very reactive. You can control the characters um, with a variety of guns, all the way from pistols to plasma rifles to rocket launchers to grenades. <clears throat> There's also a semi-auto aim for the weapons, and it feels very natural. I didn't really find any type of cover system, so they're just sort of like hide behind something, kind of like Call of Duty. There isn't like a cover system like Gears of War, so that's unf it. Would have been cool to see a cover system. <clears throat> One thing I found negative with the controls is when you transform into a car or a vehicle or whatever, the actual controls at that point feels pretty sloppy. The car sort of all over the place, that kind of thing. And I found, generally, that all ammo is hard to come by. Even on the easy difficulty, I found at times I was sort of scrounging for ammo. So it keeps it challenging. It's not a sort of little kitty easy game. So that's kind of cool. The graphics during the cutscenes look fantastic. And uh, the voice acting, even though it's corny at times, which is something you would expect from Transformers, it's, it's still pretty awesome. Because it's Transformers! And most of the game, however, looks the same. The different levels look the same. Um, same textures, same sort of color tones. And I'd imagine it might have been hard to avoid considering that it's all taking place in some uh, alien robot planet. So I guess like, it has to look the same. They couldn't get too creative with that. Now, there's a bunch of online play you can do. You can go on Xbox Live, do co-op with three, three friends, and you can go through the storyline either as the De Decepticons or the Autobots. So that's pretty cool. As for Xbox Live games, you can do Deathmatch, you can do Team Deathmatch. They have this thing called Power Struggle, and what you're trying to do is take control of nodes and defend the nodes against other people and try to hold the nodes for the longest period of time. It's sort of like a variation of King of the Hill. They also have Code of Power, and this is an attack and defend game. Essentially what you're trying to do is capture the Code of Power, take it back to your base, and then you will switch sides, and then you become the defender of the Code of Power. So that's kind of a neat concept there. You don't see that one in too many games. Then we have Countdown to Extinction. Extinction. So you start out, both sides are trying to get to the middle where there's this bomb, you're done trying to plant the bomb on the opposite team's base and defend the bomb until it explodes and then you get points. In the multiplayer stuff, you can customize your characters. And in the customization, it's just not just the looks or that kind of thing. It's really kind of cool because you can do ca customize the classes. You can go from leader to scientist to a scout to a soldier. And based on the combination that you have in your team, your team can become very lethal. So that's kind of cool. And finally, the big online uh, component is Escalation. Escalation, it's two to four players versus the AI. And you'll be facing waves and waves of AI. Just like Horde in Gears of War 2. Very similar, but still pretty fun. 
This game doesn't remind me much of any other games except for the escalation. For the most part, it's very unique, so that's kind of cool. As for the replay value, the online stuff is quite fun. You could probably get hours and hours of entertainment on that. And I'd imagine in the future they're going to be have DLC available for different map packs and that kind of thing. And uh, you can have unlockable characters too, so you can go through it with different characters again. So if you're a Transformers fan, this is a gem for sure. Must buy. If you're not a Transformers fan, um, at least rent it and go through the storyline because it's pretty cool. Thanks for tuning in, guys. That's yellowdingy.com. I'll do my best. Autobots, roll out! <laughs>